Hi, my name is John Harshbarger, and I want to discuss a little bit today about plagiarism in the pulpit. Now, in the APA version of a pocket style manual uh, by Hacker and Summers, uh, they talk about the issue of plagiarism, and I want to read a quote from the book. It says, the term intellectual property refers to published works, ideas, and images that have been created by an individual or a group. When you use the intellectual property of others in your own work, you must give credit to the source of the information. Failure to do so is a form of academic dishonesty called plagiarism. So in short, plagiarism is taking credit for the work that others have done. Uh, and this really is the letter of the law with respect to plagiarism and how plagiarism is viewed. Borrowing someone else's sermons or illustrations wholesale without credit is plagiarism. However, as Ron Forsyth points out in his article, Just What is Pulpit Plagiarism? Uh, he says the, the, the line can get kind of murky sometimes where this is concerned. Uh, for example, whole sermons. I think we would agree that whole sermons quoted verbatim without giving credit would be plagiarism. Uh, but then he asks the question, what if it's only 500 words or 50 words or even one sentence? Uh, in other words, where does that plagiarism uh, begin and, and where does it end? Uh, now, as Richard Lisher points out, who was a professor at Duke University School of Divinity, um, he says, preachers have always borrowed and quoted and voiced other preachers. Uh, Sarah Bailey includes that in an article that she wrote, and she notes that Christians can tend to be more forgiving about this issue of plagiarism than others, but still as ministers we want to ask ourselves, how much is too much? Where does it cross the line uh, between simply borrowing an illustration or borrowing a quote and and crossing that line over into plagiarism. Well, in his article, Ron Forsyth talks about three areas that we can consider when we're preparing a sermon uh, to help us determine what is plagiarism and what isn't. There's three things we can consider. The first of these is conscience. Am I guarding my own conscience in my sermon preparation and delivery? For example, have we borrowed something that's common knowledge? Uh, you know, if we've borrowed from the scriptures, we would usually uh, give the reference uh, for what we're quoting. But there's certain scriptures, Psalm 23, for example, that if we were to quote that, everybody would know where we borrowed that from. And even other sources like Dr. King's uh, I Have a Dream speech or the Gettysburg Address or uh, the Declaration of Independence, for example. Uh, these are common uh, things that, that pretty much everybody knows about. So is quoting from them without giving credit plagiarism, or do we just assume that everybody knows? That's a matter of conscience. Um, however, we got to ask ourselves, have we borrowed something that's rather more obscure and taken credit for it? And again, that's where it probably crosses the line, and that's where our consciences uh, should be bothered if we do that. Uh, now next, and, and very much tied into conscience, is the second area that Ron Forsyth brings up, and that's diligence. Am I faithfully studying the word that I am preaching? Uh, Ron Forsyth includes this quote in the article, which really is his own quote, but he says was inspired by his conversations with Chuck Swindoll. He says, if using the work of another is simply an excuse or temptation to neglect my solemn duty, I've strayed from my calling. And I think that's a really good quote. That's something that's really good for us to consider. Are we using the work of others as a shortcut to make less work for ourselves? And if so, you know, that temptation then to not give them credit, I think, again, going back to conscience, should clearly bother our conscience. Because we're not being diligent. We're, we're not doing, as Paul said to Timothy, uh, studying to show ourselves approved, being diligent, uh, workmen that need not to be ashamed. We ought to be ashamed if we're simply trying to take a shortcut by borrowing somebody else's work. Uh, however, another thing is now, if we're studying the work of another author or listening to uh, the work of another speaker, um, if we take something that we read or hear that they say and kind of put it on the shelf, 
and we study that more ourselves to make sure that that we buy into what it is that they've said and we take that truth that particular revelation and we take that to heart and make that our own no personally i would still want to give credit but i think that in an instance like that where we've studied and we've taken that and we've made that our our own uh information through our study through putting in that work uh, I would think our conscience would maybe be less bothered if we didn't give credit for that particular piece of information. Now, the third area, and, and this is a big one, is the area of trust. We have to ask ourselves, as Ron Forsyth points out, does our method of sermon preparation break trust with those to whom we preach? Okay, and how do we determine that? Well, again, congregations expect that ministers will study other ministers. They get that. They understand that. They do not expect, however, that this is simply going to be a shortcut for us, and they do not want ministers to take undue credit for things that they have not studied. So in conclusion, uh, Haddon Robinson wrote this, and again, this is uh, quoted in Ron Forces' article, in a world of preaching, a pastor who takes sermons from other preachers word for word without giving credit is guilty of plagiarism. That is stealing what is not yours. And again, I think we can all agree with what Haddon Robinson says there. Uh, that That is clearly stealing. Uh, so if we are ever, you know, kind of leery about where that line is or we're unclear or it seems a little murky, I think there's a good safeguard in looking back at those three areas that Ron Forseth talks about. Conscience, does it bother our, bother our conscience to do what we're doing? Diligence, are we using this is a shortcut to avoid doing our diligence and trust. If our congregations found out what we were doing, what we were presenting, and that we were doing it without giving credit, would it break trust with them? And by asking ourselves those questions, I think that we have a, a real good idea about where that line of plagiarism is. Uh, again, ministers will always study other ministers. However, we don't want to use it as a shortcut. And we always, whenever possible, want to give credit to those who have paved the way for us.